Okay, I have gotten the intakes off here. <clears throat> Throttle bodies, carburetors, all that other stuff. It, it just leaves the, um, the, the front portion of the motor here needs to come off. Um, this particular engine <clears throat> is a little bit different than cross flows or 90 degrees. It, it, these are two separate portions versus on the on another motor, you'll have the, the whole cap will come off, the intake and all that's in, in, in one assembly. So, um, pay close attention that we're not loosening anything else as we go along this. Get all these broken free, and they're usually pretty easy to do so. There are low, lower torque when you go to reassembling this motor. When you, uh, when you disassemble this, you'll notice that uh, there are, on this uh, V6, there are three screws toward the, uh, toward the inner portion that have washers on them, on both sides. The rest of the screws do not have a washer on them. So, if you just make a little mental note, You'll know where those screws go. And as I say all the time, it takes the guesswork out of it. Oh, we're gonna get this guy hooked back up. here that goes on you got you have to pull your reed assemblies off they come up with these screws here pull those screws off pull your reeds off pull that gasket out I'm gonna touch on that and then uh, in another segment when we go to reassembly light as possible when I gotta move it around because well I got a bad back. So uh, plus it just makes it easier. I mean no one wants to go carrying a lot of weight around. So we'll pull the heads off. Once we get the heads off then we'll uh, split the case and begin to remove the pistons. So I've already pre-loosened all these. I came through with my, my wrench and by hand, I made sure they were all loose and individually and ready to come out. The head and uh, on a crossbow you'll have water jackets. Those screws are your most likely 
other than the rectifier um, screws most likely to uh, get salted up and bind up on you and you have to heat it with a torch. You heat the outside area, you expand the aluminum and the screw will come out. Um, there's a few tricks to it. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at it throughout the years and uh, don't break many screws. However, if you do break some screws, don't, you know, it's not the end of the world. You're, uh, if, you, if you can't drill it out, your machine, you got it in your machine shop sh should be able to do it or uh, he's, he'll know somebody that can get those screws out. Um, you, know, you, you can drill them out, you can put a heel coil in there, there's, there's many ways you can go, go about fixing that yourself. Or just push it off to your machine shop guy. A lot of times he'll do it for $10 a piece and you might spend three hours on it. So for me, time is money. If it's going to take me an, an hour to do something that costs me $10 to do, I consider my time's worth a little bit more than that. I'll pay somebody 10 bucks to do it. That way, you know, I could be spending my hour making another, you know, making more money than just, uh, you know, spending $10. So I might be at a loss of $10, but I still profited off the rest of the money, money I would have made in that hour. So anyhow, um, as I said, I've got all those pre-loosened. I'm going to try to get them out with this. don't have gaskets they have an o-ring that fits inside a little groove here um, I don't particularly care for the design because when you go to reassemble it it's it's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt to do and we will uh, we'll go through that when it comes back to reassembly now this is the first time this head has come off there since this motor uh, this motor was rebuilt by someone else however uh, the person that built this motor was not uh, an Evinrude dealership. They were not uh, factory authorized to do this. Um, I can see a lot of uh, a lot of things that went wrong here. These are not a these are not an Evinrude piston. I can tell that by the top of them. These are uh, <coughs> they're an off brand. I can't tell which brand, but uh, <coughs> if you're going through all the trouble to do all this work, use factory original parts. We never use anything but factory original parts. And this is why. <clears throat> you look at this head, you can see all the dimples in it. All the dimples in it there. You can see dimples in this one. They may be from when it blew before. All those dimples are from that piston coming up and smashing a broken piece of ring into the head. Inferior products, this is what you get. So, um, I can also tell here this head gasket blue. You can see the, how it's uh, how it's black, and it joins these two cylinders. This this well the O-ring blue and allowed transfer between these ports. This one was it looks like it's been steam cleaned along with this one and this one, um, which is what happens when these things blow. They allow water into the cylinder. The water gets into the you know into the combustion chamber. It turns to steam. It cleans all this stuff, like you know, like a steam cleaner car. Also, tell by looking at 
this piston in particular, all this spot here is where water is intruded into the cylinder and steamed that um, carbon off the piston. This one shows a little bit of it, and that one down there shows a little bit of it as well. Another thing that water does is it washes the oil out of your sleeve. No oil, you know what happens. So, that's why we've got broken ring, broken ring, who knows, possible broken ring up there. Like I said though, not a factory authorized uh, shop that built this motor. Definitely not Evanry Park. 